Hey everyone, this is Kevin here with Divinely Designed, and we have a combination soap and paper crafting video today. Uh, this will probably be a little short video, but I have here some guest soaps that I created, and I actually used uh, some Wilton candy molds. Uh, this is um, a heart one with sort of a filigree pattern on it, and then this is a rose one. I use those to make these small soaps, so I think they're kind of the perfect size for a guest soap, you know, that you might put on a decorative container, but they're good for, you know, one or two uses, or just pretty ones that you would put out for guests, and um, they smell really nice. These are um, white tea and ginger type. And so uh, what I thought I would do is make a little gift box to go along with those. So you could give them as, um, you know, a hostess gift or just a little thank you or, you know, any kind of small little gift. I think they're a great size and they can go in a pretty box. So um, I started earlier, actually, I wanted to make sort of like a matchbox kind of uh, box for them. So I started with this one. And um, quite honestly, it was, now it came out nice, it's okay, I like it, but it was a pain to do. Um, so I, I have this one where it just sort of slides out and they're all in a row and uh, it looks great like that. But um, <clears throat> it was, it was, this was a pain to make. I had to do like three different um, tries at it and then it doesn't, it didn't quite fit. Fit. It was a little too loose, and I ended up having to sort of shim it up with another piece of paper in there. So anyway, so it was hard. It was a hard box to do. But anyway, I, I made it, and I, I liked it. So I, you know, I you could make a box like this. But the box I thought I would make <clears throat> is much um, more sort of easy to use, and um, it's a little you know gift box. It's a box with a lid. So. Um, and this this one here is a tiny, a little bit looser, and I'll talk about that in a second. But so open it up, and you have four of the soaps in there, a little bit of a divider. And this one, this one is nice and snug, so this one is kind of perfect. Um, let me pull this one out of here, though. And so put the hearts in there. So um, I like them. I think they're pretty. Again, they make. I think they would. They make great um, little gifts that you could give to somebody. So uh, the flower that's on. So this is a combination of the soap and my paper crafting. Um, the flower that's on top here is actually from Heartfelt Creations, and this. If you if you're not familiar with them, it's a really nice company. They make really great dies with coordinated stamps. So this one is the Sunkissed Floor die, and um, they're really high quality packaging. So this die is all one piece, and it punches out multiple pet, you know, multiple layers of the, the flower, and it also comes with some leaves. I didn't use the leaf for this project, but um, they're really nice. Now I will say they're a little bit on the pricey side, but um, I would say they're kind of worth it. And then you can get stamp sets that go along with that one die system. And they will have, um, sometimes, especially for their flowers, they will have multiple kinds of stamps. So this one has lines in it, but you can get other kinds of stamps that have sort of different patterns on the leaves. So then you can use this one this one die with sort of multiple stampings. So that's the die that I'm using for these. And you can see I kind of did multiple layers with it. In the center is a product that's called Prills, and um, this is what they look like. Uh, it's just little containers of multiple little beads, and they come in mixtures. So um, like this one is sort of an autumn kind of 
uh, mixture with sort of gold and orange and maroon and, and kind of a, a tan. Um, this one is more of a red orange and this is sort of a multicolored one. And then they have ones that are much more sort of single colored, but they're just these little tiny beads. Um, and they mimic kind of the center of flowers and they look really great, I think. So, uh, I use the prills to finish off the flower. Now, if you haven't used these heartfelt creations before, uh, they're great dies. The dies are really good. They cut out very nicely. This one I did on cardstock. This one I did on vellum. Um, and actually on the vellum then I um, used some distress ink and sort of shaded the back of the ink with a little bit of pink and then brushed the edges with some other distress ink to give it sort of the look it has right now. <clears throat> this one I... <coughs> oh, and it's embossed with um, liquid platinum embossing. This one's embossed with... Uh, uh, I want to say it's Zing black embossing powder on a bright pink ca uh, cardstock, and I think that went you know really well with sort of the black and um, pink pattern paper that I put it with. But these take a little while to put together, and so I, I'm not actually going to make the flower on the video. But you would cut out the different layers, obviously, and then you glue them together. But before you do that, what I like to do is um, you can buy special mats for it. But th I like this. This is just some of that fun foam, but it's the it's their very it's their thickest fun foam that like you can buy. Um, so it's nice and squishy, but you would take your flower petals and put them down and then they have some tools you can get. Um, I, the, I think these are actually clay. These might be some clay tools. I'm not really sure, but you can buy specific, uh, tools for the flowers themselves. But I, I, I like, uh, this, this is a good round one. And then you sort of push down and roll it around in order to get the shape of the flower. So they take a little while and a little effort to get them to look really nice. But when, when they're done, I mean, I think they just look great. These flowers are probably some of the best dye flowers that I have seen for paper crafting. They just come out really, really nice. Uh, you need to spend a little time working at them, but, but they're just, they're great looking. So, okay. Um... Uh, what else? I think that's it. So let's get to sort of how to make the card and um, some dimensions for you. So I have uh, two pieces for this. The, the What you'll need is two pieces of um, one color of the of cardstock. Uh, one is five by five and then one is five and an eighth by five and an eighth. And then you'll need two um, pieces of paper that are uh three inches by uh, three quarters of an inch. And then you'll need some pattern paper. And the pattern paper is one square of two by seven eighths by two by seven eighths. And then four pieces that are two and seven eighths by seven eighths of an inch. And these are the pattern pieces that will go on the side here in the top of the box, okay? Uh, but that's what you'll need to put this this box together. So we'll start with making the, the base and the lid. It's very simple to do. Uh, let me grab my scoring tool. For both of these larger pieces of paper, it's the same one. All you're going to do is uh, take your bone folder and score at one inch. Turn your piece of paper, score at one inch. Turn your piece of paper, score at one inch. And turn your piece of paper and score at one inch. And that's it for that square. Now we're gonna do the same with this one. This is actually gonna be the lid of the box and it's five and an eighth by five and an eighth. And if you, when you are measuring this, you actually make it, you know, slightly less than one eighth, um, uh, like, you know, uh, one sixteenth, I guess, um, then you will get a nice snug, um, fit to your lid. If you make it the actual one eighth, like if you line it up right on the one eighth line, you'll have one that's a little looser like this one. Um, you know, so sort of depends, but it does matter kind of where you do it. Um, so same thing, score at one inch, Turn one inch, turn one inch. Oh, goodness, that was bad. Turn. 
Okay. Your smaller pieces here that are three inches score just at the one and a half mark for both of them. Okay, and that's all the scoring we'll need. Now, for your pieces of paper, the top and the bottom, you are going to take uh, scissors and you're going to cut up one side of these small little corners on, on both long sides here. So, well, I guess they're all the same size, but... Uh, so you're going to make four cuts um, and just going to cut straight up. Turn, cut straight up. Now, so you'll have four cuts. Um, what I, I like to do here, and I think it makes it the box fit better, is cut out on this small piece here, not on the big piece, but on the small piece, um, cut out a little tiny sliver next to that line. So you're taking it away from the small block. So now we have this sort of angled cut there, and you're going to do it on this side as well and do that for all of them. Okay, and we're going to do the same for the other one. Cut straight up on the four corners. And then cut a little wedge out from the smaller pieces on both sides. This will just make assembling the box a little bit easier. Um, it'll make your edges um, nice. Okay, now let's um, fold all of the sides and burnish. Oh, get that piece off there. Same for the other side here. A nice crisp edge. Now we're going to be putting adhesive on the smaller, these little flaps right here on all four of them. And if you are worried and you want something really super sturdy, you could go with glue. Um, that's certainly fine. But these, these weigh not a whole lot. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think snail's okay. And for speed, for the video, I'm going to use snail here. So on all the flaps on the inside. So on the part, sort of, when they're folded inward, they'd be facing 
the bottom here. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to um, you're going to take this longer piece, and to get a nice even uh, square edge, you're going to take your cut, which is hopefully nice and flush, and line it up with this edge over here to get a nice square edge. And then using your finger back here, that press that little flap that has the, the glue on it against that. And you're just going to do that for all of the pieces there. So line it up so you're going to get a nice square edge and then press your tab against that. That'll make sure your your box is nice and square. Okay. Same thing for our other side here. Um, this is uh, this is Tombow uh, Mono Dots adhesive. It's a permanent adhesive. I find and they, Tombow also makes. Um, a permanent adhesive that's not a dot, that's like a piece of, you know, it's, it's a solid line. I find the dots work much better um, than the uh, solid stripe of adhesive. I don't know why that is, but again, just lining it up so I get nice and square. And see, now that we cut those, that little wedge out, It'll make sure it doesn't overlap, because sometimes, because of spacing, it will actually come up over the edge. Like, this one's really close, but um, it'll make a nice, um, a nice square part of your box that won't have little pieces sticking up and, and mess up the lid and how it comes down. Okay. Okay. So, let me make sure I... I forgot which is which now. So, okay, so this is my top right here. So for my top, I have my pattern paper, and I've already put my adhesive on this just to save time. Now, this is cut pretty big, so the, the edge that, that goes around is really slender. I wanted to keep a nice, just sort of peak of the under, of the white underneath. Turn it over just to give it a good press. And then my smaller pieces just go on the side. Oops. And kind of line it up with your top piece. And then just eyeball it and make sure, again, it looks like it's you know, nice and centered on that. little off kilter here. There we go. And then give it a good press. Oops. I am I am all thumbs today. And last one. Yeah. Okay, our flower. Um, just a, a pop dot or a, you know foam a sticky foam square on the back. Uh, this is the flower I made for this box, which is white paper embossed with some zing grapefruit embossing powder, and then I use the kind of autumn mix of prills in the middle here, 
And I also used some Distress Ink uh, to sponge sort of the tips here uh, to give them a little bit more depth to them. And I just want to make sure that I center this right in the middle of my box here. Now, if you don't have the Heartfelt Creations flowers, you could use uh, any other flower I think that you have. You know, if you have a nice 3D flower dye that you like, um, you could certainly do that. Or, you know, you could put a tag on top of it or just a nice ribbon, but um, I was in the mood to use these flowers. So, uh, the last thing I like to do is those smaller pieces that we had, uh, just fold them in half. And I actually am going to use Tombow for this, just a little bit, and put this right on the fold. Just like that. And take a minute or two, and I'm going to hold these two together. And you could certainly do this differently. Um, it, you could take these two pieces of paper and in the middle just cut halfway through it um, and then slide them on top of each other. Uh, you know, that, that would work too. All, all we're trying to do is kind of create um, the dividers for the middle here and the Tombow should work okay. needs a few more seconds here. Okay. That'll dry in a second there, but put it in the box while it dries. Okay. Now, you don't you don't even need the dividers, I don't think, but I think it gives it a nice finished look to it. Um, so let's take some of our soaps and put them in there. And the soaps themselves kind of keep the dividers, you know, in place. Um, but I think it, it gives it a nice finishing touch sort of when they open it. And you could, you could cover this with, um, you know, a piece of tissue paper if you really wanted to. But I like, I like how the, they have sort of this nice clean look to it. So put our box top on. That fits great. This is a perfect lid. It holds in place, but it's not it's not super snug. Um, I can I can pull it off pretty easily. So that was a perfect size. If I can get it back on now. Okay. So there we have it. Our soap boxes. Um, uh, you know, and I made a couple just with some different pattern paper and, um, you know, and then this one as well, which I didn't sort of mass produce there, <laughs> but okay, that's it. Um, uh, you know, comments, questions, leave them below. If you like this video, click on that thumbs up. Uh, if you are not subscribed to my channel and you like soapy videos and crafty videos, then click on that subscribe button. And, um, that's it, everybody. Have a great day. Talk to you all later. Bye.